the city of San Francisco, sitting directly on the fault line, paid dearly for its location in 1906, for in that year the entire city was destroyed in a single momentous earthquake. In 1971, there was another serious quake in the San Fernando Valley. Sixty-four people died, and damage was estimated in the millions. Scientists are convinced that another major earthquake will occur in the San Francisco area. The question is, when? The new skyscrapers are claimed to be earthquake-proof, but many doubt their ability to withstand a major quake. The spectacular mountain ranges that dominate the Earth are the result of plate movement. When two oceanic plates converge, one plate descends beneath the other. The point of contact is marked by a deep underwater trench. The descending plate is heated by friction and squeezed it begins to melt. Although the oceanic crust is basaltic in composition, the molten rock produced here is granitic. Through the course of time, volcanoes are built up, granite warts on an oceanic crust. With successive eruptions, these cones eventually form strings of volcanic islands called island arcs. Japan is an island arc formed over many tens of millions of years. Island arcs occur along the western margin of the Pacific Ocean. Violently eruptive from time to time, they form part of the ring of fire that surrounds the Pacific. produces earthquakes of varying intensities. Japanese scientists have become expert in predicting the time and place of their occurrence. 15% of all earthquakes occur in the Japanese area. Similar volcanic and earthquake activity occurs with devastating results in the Andes, one of the greatest coastal mountain ranges in the world. This earthquake was responsible for the death of more than 50,000 people. Here, the oceanic plate descends directly under the continental margin. There are no island arcs. Molten rock rises through the continental crust. In time, volcanic mountain ranges are formed. The pressure created by the descending plate causes the land near the coast to fold up, deforming the rocks and pushing them even higher to form the jagged ranges of the Andes.
here, perched three miles high, the ruins of Machu Picchu, a city hewn from the Andes itself. Only this rock endures, a monument to a passing civilization. The Andes provide a clear illustration of the close relationship between converging plates and mountain building. The Rockies and other west coast ranges of North America were formed in a similar way. It's not difficult to imagine how the coastal mountain ranges came to be, but what about the inland Himalayas and Alps stretching from China to Western Europe? Well, if destruction of an ocean basin continues, the continents on the two sides must eventually come together, closing the basin. Since continents are granitic in composition, they float high on their respective plates. They resist the process of destruction characteristic of oceanic plates. Meeting head on, they collide, exerting immense pressures upon each other. Both the continental margins and the marine sediment in between are crumpled and deformed, throwing up a huge mountain range. This was how the great Himalayan mountains were created, also the Alps and the Pyrenees. All this came to pass long before man walked the earth and followed his gods and his dreams into the mountains. The mountains he, in the infinitesimally small span of his life, believed as permanent as his gods, as enduring as eternity. But what happens now? The future of man is perhaps less predictable than that of the earth itself. Two hundred million years ago, the earth was composed of one immense ocean and a single supercontinent, Pangaea. The continents to be have roughly their present day shapes. Australia, Antarctica, India, Africa, Asia, North and South America. One hundred and 